so you won't be able to see me. Um, it's just that I've got too many things going on and the internet is really slow today. Um, so I'll stay in this for a few minutes, give you guys an introduction, and then I'll switch to the other camera. All right. Okay, um, welcome everyone. Welcome to White Canvas Arts. Um, my name is Sharanya and I'm going to be your host um, for this pastel uh, painting workshop. Um, this is an hour and a half workshop. Um, typically, usually we there's some time left over. We never finish the paintings. It's one and a half hours is just less time. So I do go an extra 30 minutes. Um, you guys are welcome to stay or, um, um, or leave. Um, either way, I'm recording. Um, and you should be able to see it uh, once I post it on YouTube. Carb, Othello, uh, chalk pastels, basically they are hard pastels, they are pencils. These are going to be for details. So these pencils you can see um, have to be manually sharpened. Don't use an automatic sharpener to sharpen them because the binding in the pencil is just powder. So it's going to just um, crumble and fall off if you're using an automatic sharpener. So definitely use a mechanical one like this. Um, I think it's seven or eight dollars um, at Amazon. So this is uh, the cheapest. They do have very good quality. So this is like a good starter set. I use this for all of my students and it's a 64 color set. I also have a slightly more expensive brand. Um, it's called the Rembrandt. It's a professional brand. Um, they are expensive, uh, but uh, for archival quality, a few more things. There's always more things we tend to have. Uh, I try to limit them, uh, but unfortunately today I couldn't get away with it. So um, I've got blending stumps. Um, sometimes for these fine areas where my finger or even my little finger doesn't get in, I do use my blending stumps for, um, for it, particularly the eye area today when we're blending, we want to make sure we're not smudging the eye, we want very clear um, output. I will use my pastel pencils for that, but if I do tend to, if I need to blend, I do use the blending stumps for that. So that's um, extra today. And I've got a fixative. Um, I prefer not to use them because they are harmful. Um, we need to be outdoors to use these. Please do not use them indoors. Um, the fumes are not good for you and you don't want it hanging around your living room or your studio. So definitely use it outdoors. Today, I'm going to try very hard not to use these. The painting itself is not layer heavy. So we prefer the fixative when we want to add more and more layers and we are not, um, and we've, you know, kind of, um, you say six, seven layers of pastels is not going to just stick to the regular paper. So we're going to fix a couple of layers and then we add more on top. That's uh, for most of why this is used. Uh, otherwise, you can use it at the very end after you're done the painting and you can fix it so it doesn't smudge or um, you don't lose the quality of the picture. So that's uh, when we use the fixative. Today, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be using it between layers. I will only use it at the very end after the meeting itself, after I'm done with the whole painting. I will use this to um, fix my drawing itself. So that's the fixative I've got. So these are all of the browns that I have. Um, so this is the chocolatey brown. This is slightly more red. Can you see the difference? This is a slightly reddish brown. So I'm going to go with this. After I go with this, I am going to use some black to darken it and blend it in. Feathers themselves, the base color of the feathers in this case is slightly darker than this brown. So that's what we're going for. So I'm going to use black now, use it very cautiously. We're going to add a very, very thin, light layer of black on top. We are going to darken this brown. That's all. 
we don't make it as black as possible. There is a difference here. So use it sparingly and watch what I'm doing. Very lightly grace. You're going to only grace the black. Slightly grace it. Gonna, you can see how I've created strokes. And now I'm going to use my finger and blend that black in. That it's a dark color. Black is really dark. So use it really, really cautiously and very, very sparingly. And then you can see here that I do a nice blend. I go back and forth multiple times until that black is completely blended. And you can see it darkens the brown. It's still not black, but it's a really dark brown. That's the brown we're going for. The face, um, I do have this color for the face uh, and the neck. This is a perfect color. I'm going to pair it up with a few strokes of this color, which is our detail. But again, I'm not gonna use the stick for it. I will use my pencil, but the base color of the neck and the face, uh, the above the face is going to be this color. time you're going to go sideways and you can actually give in a few here and there so this is just a branch it's going to be a lot of different colors so give these colors here and there and then you're just going to blend them all together at the end So they're pretty similar. This is my yellow ochre and my ye brightest yellow. So these are the two yellows I have. And then a light orange and a dark orange. The dark orange I may or may not use, I haven't decided yet, uh, but primarily these three colors. So we're gonna start with the mid-tone. The highlight will sit on the mid-tone. So don't give this first. You're gonna give the mid-tone first. Mid-tone meaning the slightly duller version of the color first. So I'm just coloring this in like a regular pencil. Right on top, I'm not blending anything yet. The second layer of the yellow is automatically going to blend that color in. So we're gonna get that earthy tone with the yellow highlight. And then now comes the yellow orange. So this is a yellow orange and this is the actual color of the feet. And I'm going to use it around my yellow. The yellow is going to mix with the color underneath and it will get lighter. And then we're going to mix it with the orange on the side as well. So you'll definitely see it toned down. Got a nice dark patch of dark, dark brown. It's very close to black again. So I'm picking up that um, the brown that I did for the body and the black again. So same concept, we add the brown first, add the black. But because this is pencil, it's hard to blend these. Um, so blend them with a blending stick. Now that this is done, let's work on the middle of the beak. It's a peachy color. It's got a slight orange um, outline to it. So I'm gonna pick up my light orange and very, very lightly grace the corners. When, because when I take in my peach color, it's gonna pick up that orange and blend with it. Be very careful right in between the browns. Um, it is a point of uh, 
dark color on either side. So we don't want to mess that up. So I'm taking in, it's just a peach. Uh, it's just an off-white color. It's not, it's not exactly peach, it's off-white. So I'm taking that and then I'm blending in this orange. You can see how the orange will blend with that color. And only in the corners, it's going to create the effect we have, we're seeing on the picture. We will work on the eyes last, uh, just because I want a clearer view. So I might move the camera to the side a little bit and then I'll work on the eyes. So I'm gonna leave that there. The face um, details are done. Um, let's go ahead and add the feathers on the sides and up above it. So using this pencil to do it, just a few as an ad, this is where you minutely follow your reference picture. You're gonna mark every stroke you're seeing as much as possible. So just a few strokes here and then no blending for this. So this just sits on your previous color. shapes uh, shaping up each of the feathers and then I remember I said light gray so we will be using a little bit of blue and white so this is a unique combination uh, I'm trying to make that um, highlight a bluish gray uh, rather than just a straight up regular white and black mixed gray. That's part of the reason I'm bringing in the blue. Uh, this is again a personal thing. Um, the blue is an opposite um, tone for these browns. The brown, basically the hue that we call the brown is, is actually an orange. And the blue is the natural opposite of orange. So uh, the highlight uh, or, uh, for the wings are going to be blue toned. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of that light blue. Okay, and then we can blend it out with the blending stump. One fun thing about the blending stump, I only ever used it for my feet. So I'm not uh, using a sandpaper. Otherwise I would use a sandpaper to saw off this color and then um, use it on a fresh piece of space um, to blend. So that's how you would maintain your blending stumps. Here, volume plays a very important role. The volume of that tiny little finger is a toe is a triangle, uh, is a cylinder. So think of a cylinder when you are doing those lines. You want them to be nice curvy flicks rather than just um, straight up lines. So I'm not drawing straight lines here. They are um, curvy. If you see, I left out this part completely because it's white and gray. I don't want to mess it up right now. I want the white. So that's the reason why I didn't touch it. Now this does have a white highlight. Um, if it's possible when you're drawing, leave out that highlight like we did for the, um, the nails. If not, use a gel pen, a white gel pen, and you can add the highlight. You can add it with white gouache. You can add it with paint as well. So that is an alternative if you do tend to fill it up. So I'm gonna try for that sliver of white. I don't know how successful I'm gonna be. 